What's going on YouTube? Matt from Garage MC here. As you guys saw by the thumbnail that I didn't even set up yet, but you know, I bought a bunch of stuff out just so I can get you guys a nice detailed thumbnail to click on. Um, got a customer quad dropped off last night. He's a subscriber. It's a 2003 Honda TRX 400EX. Um, we're going to go into the story on why this is here and why it's in the shape it's in, but um, the quad's actually pretty nice. Um, the owner of the quad is actually pretty pissed, and I don't blame him for the situation that brought it to this point. But the quad's here now, so you guys already know. It's going to get fixed 100% and be the proper and right way. Uh, we got to split the cases. So I got to take the bottom end off the quad. I'll show you guys the quad here in a minute. Uh, it's got some pretty tasteful mods on it, too. So it's, it's going to be a nice quad when it's done. Um, we got to take the bottom end out. There's no cylinder head or anything on it right now. So we're going to take that out. Um, and then I'm going to, in this video, will be part one on this. I'm going to show you guys how to disassemble and split cases on a 99 to 2004 400EX. Uh, Non-reverse model. 05 and up obviously has reverse. But don't worry if you're looking for a video on how to do that. Also have a reverse model engine that I have to get to after this. Uh, this is going for Jesse's 426 build, but waiting on a few more items to come in. I want to have everything here before I start doing anything to it. So this is the one we just took off of, the one that you guys seen me strip the other day. So um, let me get everything all situated, and then I will uh, lay out all the parts that the subscriber Mike dropped off with the quad last night, let you know what we're doing to it, and then we'll get into splitting these cases. I'll show you guys what tools you need and how I do it. Um, you know, there's a procedure to it, but you know, we'll go over all that while we're doing it. Stay tuned, pull up a seat, let's get it. All right, guys, so here, let's take a look at Mike's quad real quick. This is, uh, like I said, it's a 2003. Um, he didn't have a gas tank, but, you know, I have stacks of those here now, so I'll just slap that on there real quick. Um, so, let's talk about what it's got done first. He's got some Elka front and rear shocks, Lone Star A-arms. Um, he's got these uh, air shrouds, stock carburetor. Um, we'll get into why his engine's torn down to that in a second. He's got Lone Star rear axle, wave rotor, stock rear brakes, uh... Looks like probably, I didn't look at it, but more than likely a DID chain. Uh, judging by everything else that's on his quad, I'm sure he didn't buy a Chinese chain. He's got a um, Lone Star axle, Lone Star sprocket hub, obviously comes with the axle. Um, and also this billet sprocket guard, Team Alba Racing Pro Elite Nerf bars. Uh, he's got the ASV levers, the other one's in the box, he asked me to put on for him. There's also a Hauser steering stem. And he's got these nice bead locks on here. So, all right. Story of why it got to this point. When you guys are going to take your quad to get worked on by somebody, do it with somebody that you know knows what they're doing. So, I don't know how long. And Mike, when you watch this video, drop a comment down there and let people know. Um, I mean, if you want to tell them who it was, that's up to you. I don't normally, you know do negative stuff like that, but, I mean, you're free to say whatever you want in the comments. If you want to give everybody else a heads up, I'm sure they'll want to know if they're in your area to not go to that guy. Um, and if the guy that did do this is watching, messed up, bro. Very messed up. Really, really messed up. I, I wouldn't, you know, you're lucky Mike took it so well. I wouldn't have. I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, um, he dropped the quad off to get a head gasket done. The guy had the quad for a few months. Tore it all the way down, started telling Mike he needed a bunch of parts, this, that, and a bunch of other shit. Um, as far as what I understand, and Mike, like I said, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, the dude lost his cylinder, um, he didn't give him the, the head back at first, he's missing his gas tank, God only knows what else, but you guys just, you know, either learn how to do this stuff, like I try to make videos to where you guys can do a similar procedure along with me. Um, I try to include everything I possibly can. Sometimes it's hard to get camera angles and show you guys exactly what's going on, but I try and do my best with that. But um, what we're about to do today, 
is not that complicated, man. I'm gonna take the, the bottom end off the quad, off camera. I mean, you guys have seen me do that before, but I'll give you a quick rundown. Uh, you gotta disconnect the clutch cable. You gotta obviously take one, two, motor mounts. Um, if your top end is still on, you got the motor mount up top too, under the tank and heat shield that should be there. Um, and the rear pivot bolt has to come out. Then you can take the engine out, uh, obviously. Unplug the stator, the starter, um, any other wires that are going to it, and your oil lines, and motor comes right out. Um, chain as well. So there's a couple, well, it's probably not a couple things I'm missing, but you guys know what I'm saying. So I'm going to take that off, off camera, and then we'll get it over on the bench. Before I take it off the quad, I'm going to remove uh, like the clutch assembly and stuff like that that's just easier to take out while it's still in the quad. And then I'll pick back up with you guys. When we pick back up in this, I'll lay out all the parts that he brought me. Show you guys where it's going, like what his plans are, what he wants done with it, and then we'll get to splitting these cases. Let's go over the parts that Mike brought me. So we have from BPRATB.com. You guys already know he called and used my promo code, saved himself a 10% amount off of everything he purchased from them. Um, I'll give you guys the promo code, it's right here. GMC10, 10% off, BPRATB.com. Also, same promo code, GMC10, for TeamAlbaRacing.com. Anything there as well. Also, 10% off. Use my promo code, man. Save that coin. This way you can buy a lot more stuff like this. So, the quads go into a 416. So, we have a, from BPR ATV, a cylinder that was bored out by them in-house. 86 millimeter. We have a JE piston. I believe this is a 10.5 or an 11 to 1. 86 millimeter for the 416 kit. We have my favorite stuff to use in the cylinder head. Kibble white, titanium retainers, dual valve springs, all the valves, all kibble white. Um, we have a head here, but this head might not be might not be usable for what we're what we're doing here. This head was ported out. Um, the exhaust ports look really good, but you guys let me know in the comments, man. Am I bugging, or does that just look like the crappiest port job I've ever seen in my life? That does, it's not even even. Like, all the porting favors this side, and then this side is like, it doesn't even match. And it's hogged out, like, heavily, just for a little bit of reference here. Here's a stock one. Let's see if I can get you guys an angle. See the difference there? That's like, that's a lot, man. And for it not being even... I mean, come on. So, I don't know who ported this. Um, I believe he said BPR, but this is not their work, guys. Somebody touched this intake port after they had it. This is BP's work right here. You guys can see the exhaust ports. I mean, that is beautiful. The seats were all done real nice, everything. But somebody definitely touched that intake side after um, it was done by BP. So... Might not be able to use that. It might be a little too far gone because of how much material is taken off of that head. All right, next things we got OEM valve keepers or the for the retainers. We have OEM the uh, nuts for the exhaust studs. There's four studs in the head, or well, in the head we're going to use is going to have four studs. So instead of having two bolts and two nuts with studs, it's going to be all four studs. I always do that to any of them anyway. Um, we got new chain sliders for the timing chain. We got here. That's uh, that's for bolting it inside the case, the little collet, the washer, and the bolt. We have a heavy-duty timing chain. We have the titanium um, head studs from BPR ATV. These are all titanium too, guys. The 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 stud, the washer, the twelve-point nut, all titanium. Um, believe they're called their Max Lock head stud kit. Um, Timing inspection hole caps for Tusk. Brand new OEM crank bearings from Honda. Brand new Honda OEM crank. Uh, OEM cam bearings. Cam gear. And a stage 2 hot cam. Cometic gaskets. And that's about it. What other stuff that came with his quad. He's got a full RS2 Yosh exhaust. Um, the other ASV lever I got to put on and a uni filter, uni, uni, whatever you want to say, you know what I meant. 
All right, let me pull that bottom end and we'll get to splitting this. All right, guys, I got the bottom end pulled off of Mike's quad here. Um, one key thing when you guys are going to do stuff like this, more important than any tools, you, well, the tools are really important too. Uh, we'll get into some of the tools that uh, you need to do this as I pull them out and use them. Um, organization, man. Organization is, is huge. Uh, as a matter of fact, over here on the rest of my bench, by where I have the engine on the engine stand now, I'm going to get all that cleaned up. I'm going to put some paper down. Uh, I'll show you guys what I do. Um, it's, you know, it, one, it helps with cleanup. You know, it's like using tin foil on a baking pan. You just roll it up and throw it out when you're done. But organization is, is huge. So I have all his stuff over here. Um, that's not his stator cover. His I uh, left uh, connected. and It's just sitting on top of the air box. I just, I, I always have extra covers laying around, guys. I'll just throw the bolts back in the covers. This way nothing gets lost or wherever it go. There's no wasting time trying to figure stuff out later. Um, this expansion tank does not go to his quad. Uh, this goes to my buddy Tim CR. He broke that tab off. I had to re-tig weld that on there. I'll be getting that back today. Um, but yeah, organization, man. Organization is huge. So I got to clean all this stuff off of here. And uh, I'll give you a little tip in the next scene. I'll show you how I have it laid out. Um, it's, it's, it's super simple, but, uh, I have videos tearing down the clutch and timing chain section on a 400 X. So I'm going to do that off camera. Um, I have videos for that. So if you guys are looking for that, check out my other videos. There's well over a hundred and 120 full length videos uploaded. So, um, just basic stuff. Uh, the oil pump gear just comes off. Um, it's just these five, 10 mils. And then I believe there's a 27 mil underneath there. Uh, you know off the top of my head um it's the same as this size here but um just take that off take primary drive off oil pumps the 310s i'm gonna take the oil screen out and then when i get that stripped we'll start uh i'll start showing you how to split the cases on this starting with the um the uh, flywheel and then i'll tell you how many bolts there are and show you the procedure on that and then we'll get out our case splitting tools from tusk and our crank puller tool we're going to need later um, and yeah, so let's, let's get into this guys. Let me clean this up real quick. Get all organized here. The last little bit that I got to do. And, uh, yeah, here we go. All right. So I got the whole clutch side disassembled to where I'm going to start showing you guys, uh, how to split the cases on this TRX 400 X 99 to 04 non reverse blah, 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 blah. Um, like I said before, guys, if you need to know how to do all this stuff, check out my older video. Um, I, th I think it was a uh, timing chain and sliders titled something like that. Just look through them. You'll find it. Uh, a lot of 400X content on my channel, if you don't already know that by now. But so here's what I do to stay organized. I got my table with paper laid out. So the first part I take off will normally be, when I put it back together, the last part to go back on, like in a perfect world, right? So the first part that comes off, clutch assembly, is the furthest part away. So I'll start putting it left to right. So, and then, I mean, I don't need to tag the stuff, but I'm just doing this to show you guys like what you can do. Um, you know, I'll tag each part. So that came off first, this came off second, primary drive gears. And then here's, actually, as a matter of fact, I didn't wipe this off yet, guys. I wanted you guys to see all the stuff that was on inside Mike's engine here. A bunch of little, little bullshit all over the screen. Um, as long as you clean these screens out, man, they're, they're reusable. Unless this rubber coating that's on it is all dried out. But it's usually not the case. It's always, you know, in oil. So, I mean, you guys see what's going on here. So, as I continue, you know what I mean? Uh, it'll keep going this way. And then, do 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 come back over and, and then when i get to the end and everything's all apart when you go to put it back together you just start here and start working your way in reverse hence the reason i said the first thing to come off is the furthest thing away so we start to do reassembly you you guys know what the hell i'm saying man i don't need to explain it anymore all right so i'm going to turn this thing around and let's get out our tool to remove the flywheel and then i'll tell you guys where all the bolts are to split the cases and let's get it going so over here on the flywheel side, once you take your stator cover off, uh, you know, it's got the starter assembly, the starter gears in here, these just, you can either just pull this pin out or pull the whole assembly out, but this just, just pull this sleeve out. So there's your other half of your starter assembly there. That's all that holds that in. There's no clips or nothing. 
This is the 17 millimeter that when you open your timing inspection hole, this is what you're turning to get your motor over to top dead center. Like if you can see these marks, like here you got the fire mark and then T for top dead center. That's, you know, when the piston's at the top of its stroke. That's how you would set your timing. Um, you know, we'll get into that later on in this video. You guys seen me do top ends before, so this is basically going to be, this is part one, obviously, like I said, just tearing down and splitting the cases on the 400X. Part two, we'll go over putting seals in, the bearings that we're replacing, and how to put the cases back together with the transmission, forks, all that good stuff, shift drum. But anyway, this is regular thread, so righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So once you take this out, you're going to need a flywheel. Uh, remover tool. Tusk makes it. Here's what it looks like here. Comes in this package. Um, I usually label mine and keep them in the packages because I have several different ones for several different machines. Um, or you could get an M20 by 1.5 by 1.5 bolt. That's, uh, I mean, you could do that too, but I think these are like 15 bucks, but I mean, you could go to the hardware store and just get a regular bolt. But I mean, this has a nice flat surface on it and it's designed for it. So, once you take your 17 mil out, and on the back of that 17 mil is this big, thick ass washer. Make sure that's there. So you would thread this in, and make sure when you go to do this, man, you bottom this all the way out. Get it nice and snug by hand. All right. And then you're going to want to take your rod that's sticking out because if you don't do this, you're going to smack that rod around. So you want to get it on the you want to get it turning counterclockwise so have the rod not in not in this position that would be like when you're loosening the bolt so now that you're going to be tightening the uh, flywheel removing tool bolt you get it over here hold this down i usually use a screwdriver like this that's got flat surfaces so it doesn't damage the cases um, and then you would take your impact gun and just go ahead and send this puppy home and it will pop the flywheel off just like you see it's starting to pull itself off now and oh, let me get this out of my way here so this will come off so inside here that's your one-way bearing for when you're starting so it only spins one way now we can put that to the side and that's magnetic so just you know when you start taking the stuff apart you could leave it all together like I usually do like I put the clutch back together but all right so after this there's a bunch of eight millimeter bolts. So let me start cracking all these free and I'll show you where they are. There's, uh, I believe, uh, 12 of them on this side, if I remember correctly. And I believe there's two on the other side, but I think this engine's missing one. So I'll show you where they're all at anyway. So let me get that set up. I'll crack all those free and then we'll get to splitting this. All right. So the eight millimeter bolts that got to come out of the case, guys, you have 11 on the stator side. They're all around the whole perimeter of where the case is split. And then you have two on the clutch side. The two on the clutch side, you got one here. And you got one over here in the front. So I'll show you guys the other side where all these other 11 bolts go. Um, and this is what I do. You can either draw out a template, poke holes where they all go, or I just draw a template and number the holes. I mean, you know, I know where they all go now, but this is, if you guys are doing this for the first time, just got to stay organized. Then I just mark them all. Put them all through, and then if you don't want to lose any, you can just tape this together and it ain't going to fall out. So the 11, the 11, go on the other side. All right, so here's where the 11 go on the stator side. Um, I usually go with the, the motor mount bolt, so I'll start there and work from left to right. So one, two, three, four, and you have five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, right down here, and then 11 is up here behind the bracket there. Well, this is the bracket for my motor stand, but that's the 11 to go on this side. So then, now, we have all of our case bolts out. I'll go ahead and set my stand up. This is a nice stand, man. If you guys are going to be doing engine builds like on the regular, I would definitely recommend getting one of these it makes everything a lot easier you could tilt this all the way up 90 degrees which makes it good when you're putting everything back together um i also took the sprocket off the other side you don't need to do that right now because everything's going to stay in the left side engine case but you just got your two tens 
And then this lock pin here sits crooked so it doesn't let it slide off the teeth. I'll just take that off now because I'm going to do it anyway. Now you got two tens in here. This is your return spring, and then this is the shift star. So when you take these ten, these two tens out, make sure you just keep everything organized like we've been doing the whole time. Um, I don't normally use an impact gun to break stuff free, guys. These were already cracked free, and I just use it to get the rest of the bolt out of the way. Same as before. I'm going to put everything together, and then I'll label this over here. Same way we were taking everything apart. This is your shift star. It's got uh, the letter H on that. That Anytime you have something that has writing or anything on it, usually faces the outside of the engine. This only goes on you know, one way if you have the letter facing out goes on a little pin there that goes to the shift drum inside the engine which you'll see in a minute put our bolt back in there stick it over here now I'm gonna start setting up my tusk case splitting tool I already have these in here the way these go the way this works is you get this you want to distribute the pressure as much as you can and get this started down as far as you can they have several nuts that come with this. It comes with two different size rods. These are for like the eight mil bolts. And then they have a thicker one, which would be like for 10 mils. If you have a you know, case that takes 10 mil bolts to put it together. So you want to get this, you want to have two of these nuts down here. You screw these into the case. Then you run this lock nut down to the case. This way it's nice and tight. And then these will come up and meet the bottom of your case splitter. If you have one of these tools um can you do it without it yeah but i mean i definitely wouldn't recommend you know it, you, you got to have the right tools to do the job you know unless you're somebody else and you want to install bearings and stuff with sledgehammers and cranks with sledgehammers but you know i'm sure to i'm sure their quad worked for a little bit probably didn't run too good though probably make a friggin milkshake on the seat of the quad so, and then there's a few more nuts that came with this case splitter tool. So once you get this level and you got it seated where it's meeting the crank here. So when you go to, when these other nuts are on this case splitter, it's going to hold it tight to the case. And then you're going to go crank this down. Don't use an impact gun on this. You, you, wanna, you want this case to pretty much split on its own. You don't want to force anything when it comes to this stuff. If you if you're feel like you're forcing something... Stop doing what you're doing and go back and double check stuff. All right, guys, I got everything all put together here. Um, as far as the case splitter goes, I started cracking down on it just a little bit to get it set so I could film it for you guys. It, it already started coming to, coming apart over here, so we're good so far. So like I said, I do this by hand. So this is the same, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Just give it a little, give it a little crank, you know, turn it down a little bit and keep, keep it coming. Now, if you see it starting to split uneven like this, there's a dowel back here. So don't, I mean, let me say it this way. I don't recommend sticking a flathead in here on a gasket mating surface and prying stuff apart. I mean, if you have a really good feel for it, you can. Um, they make other tools for this. You could use like a, a, a plastic, um, like a pick tool or anything like that. But the, you, so what you want to do now when it's splitting uneven, you want to give it a little bit of encouragement. This is more than likely because of this stand with this rod right here, but it's not too much tension on there. Just give it a couple taps with a rubber mallet. Don't, don't get, don't, don't get that four foot long sledge over there and just start railing shit home like you're happy gilmore all right that's the don't, don't do that all right you can go ahead and give the uh the input and output shaft a little tap and this is a rubber mallet guys i'll you know this is don't don't use a metal hammer don't use a ball peen hammer nothing like that just crack the seal a little bit putting very little bit of force on it that's it open up right there so and i'm gonna start cranking down a little bit more and she's splitting for us now if you guys can see that coming apart you want to go a little bit there it is Dang. it's probably stuck on the dowel in there because 
the last guy that was in here probably didn't put any anti-seize on the dowels, but don't you worry. We're, we're, we're going to get into that when we put this bottom end together. This video here is just simply to show you guys how to split 400X bottom end and what it entails to get stuff off. All right, so let me get my case splitter off of here, and then I'll pick up with you guys when we go to take the right half case, the right case half off of the left left case half. I can't talk, and uh, I'll show you guys what's on the inside, and then we'll I'll piece you guys out. And we'll end this video, and I'll start making the next one. All right, guys, I got my case splitter out of the way. You want to if these are sticking, you want these to stay with the the left side case. You don't want them to pull out because especially if you if this is the first time you've ever done this, you know you're, you're not going to really know if something falls out. But just a little tap, a little tap 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 a You know what I mean? If these weren't sticking. I'm just giving you a little demonstration. So there's a right side case half off of that everything stays in the left side so i mean this is the inside of your trans whoa 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 whoa! hold on hold on am i about to end this video and you didn't smash the subscribe button or even think to be courteous enough to smash the thumbs up button at the very least it don't cost you nothing i hope you're not one of them guys but anyway see you in the next video back to the ending of this in the next video I'm going to show you guys, we're going to pull the trans out, we're going to pull the crank out with the right tools, show you guys the tools that I use, and then we're going to go over um, cleaning, uh, I'll clean this stuff off camera, you guys will see everything go in, new seals, we'll put the new crank bearings in, like uh, Mike had asked me to do, and we'll put the new crank in, we'll reinstall the transmission, new gasket, put it all back together, and be ready to go, you guys see me do top ends before? Same thing, this is a 400X, I don't care if it's a 400, 416, 426, 440, 465, 7000, EX, whatever. Same procedure on the top end. So, next video, we'll put all this together with all new stuff, and we'll make the cases back together. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining me today. Peace!